Hi, my name is Mohammed Asim Ibrahim, and today I will present our work analyzing and leveraging shared L1 caches in GPUs. This work was jointly performed with my advisor at William and Mary and our collaborators at AMD. GPUs are a crucial component in most computing systems as they provide orders of magnitude faster and more energy efficient execution for many general purpose applications. And to match the increasing computational demand, GPUs have been scaling in die size as shown in this plot. As the die size increases, the number of cores increases as well. And this leads to an increase in the volume of requests from the many cores, which puts pressure on the reply bandwidth from the few L2 slices. Therefore, the only chip L1 bandwidth is underutilized, while the L2 bandwidth is bottlenecked. Also due to the private nature of these many cores, each core can independently request data from the L2 while being oblivious to other cores data. And this leads to data replication across the cores L1 caches. For example, we can see in this figure that multiple L1 caches are storing the blue cache line. However, before discussing our work, let me tell you about the time I wanted to bake cookies. For that, I needed the following four ingredients. I found that I have two of these ingredients, which are sugar and eggs. However, I didn't have the other two ingredients. So for the, the missing ingredients, I had two choices, either to go to the supermarket and risk waiting in line or even catching COVID, or I can go and maybe bother my neighbors and ask them if they have these ingredients and get it from them. In this case, I found the missing ingredients at my neighbors and saved the trip to the supermarket. And as you can see, I'm using my neighbors as an additional source of ingredients. And this is the main idea of our PACT 2019 paper. Now let us consider another situation when I only had one ingredient, which is the eggs. I checked with my neighbors and I found that two of them has chocolates and the other one has eggs. So I went to one of them to get the chocolate. However, I'm still missing two ingredients. Therefore, I ended up going to the supermarket to get the missing ingredients. But what if we agree that each one of us is always responsible for keeping one unique ingredient? This way, I can get the missing ingredients from my neighbors and save the trip to the supermarket. And as you can see, by eliminating the ingredient replication, we can have more unique ingredients in the building. We observe a similar problem in GPUs in which the private nature of the L1 caches leads to data replication across the L1s, which reduces the collective L1 cache capacity. To eliminate such wasted capacity, we propose shared, shared L1 cache design, which improves the collective L1 hit rate significantly and the, and the overall performance. Also, given the affinity of some application towards the private L1 cache design, we propose a lightweight dynamic scheme that classifies the application as shared friendly or private friendly and configure the L1 caches accordingly. Our dynamic scheme improves the performance over a private L1 baseline by 22% on average and improves the energy efficiency by 49% on average. This is our talk outline. I will start by quick introduction and motivation. Then I will discuss our proposed schemes to enable shared L1 caches and finally, I will evaluate our proposed design and conclude our work. As I mentioned before, in GPUs, the private nature of the paired core L1 caches enables each L1 cache to store any cache line from the full address range. And this leads to data replication across the L1 caches, which can be considered as a waste of caching resources. To eliminate such waste, our idea is to use a shared L1 cache design under which each L1 cache is responsible for storing cache lines from a unique address range slice. And by doing that, the replication across the L1 caches is eliminated as shown in this figure. To show how the requests are handled under shared L1 caches, let us consider this requester core with the yellow cache line. If this core requests the yellow cache line, then its request can be served locally as it is the home of that cache line. However, if this requester core ask for the green cache line, then it will inject a remote request into the interconnect to the home of the green cache line to fetch it. And the home core will reply with the green cache line to the requester core so that it can use it. However, the requester core cannot locally store the green cache line as it doesn't belong to its assigned address range. To estimate the performance scope of shared L1 caches, we assume a perfect communication scenario under which the cores communicate with each other in zero cycles. And this figure shows on the y-axis the reply bandwidth breakdown from the L2, which is shown as shaded green, 
and from the remote course, which is shown as solid green for both the perfect scenario and the private L1 baseline. We observed that under the perfect scenario, we obtain additional ownership bandwidth from the remote course. And this is because of eliminating the replication, which in turn provides more collective L1 cache capacity. Therefore, more data can be cached, leading to higher hit rates and overall more on its chip bandwidth. And such bandwidth boost translates to a performance improvement of up to 84%. Now we move to discussing how to design shared L1 caches to eliminate data replication. To enable shared L1 caches, we first need core-to-core -core communication. Therefore, in this work, we use a 2D mesh as it inherently has core-to-core -core links, which are underutilized as shown by prior work. We also evaluated a design that utilizes the work distribution crossbar to handle intercore traffic. The work distribution crossbar already exists and it is used by the graphics pipeline. In this presentation, I will assume a 2D mesh in the baseline and in our proposed designs. However, similar conclusions regarding the work distribution crossbar can be found in the paper. We built such shared L1 cache organization and evaluated its performance. And this figure shows the L1 mesh rate under shared L1 caches on the y-axis across the evaluated replication-sensitive applications and normalized to the private L1 baseline. We observed that the L1 miss rate drops by 80% as the replication is eliminated across the L1 caches. However, such reduction in the L1 miss rate doesn't translate to a performance improvement, and we actually observe a performance degradation of 5% across these evaluated applications. And this is due to the naive communication overhead which inefficiently utilizes the interconnect bandwidth. And this is shown by the 2.2x latency overhead in the reply network. Therefore, it is essential to analyze this overhead and propose optimizations to elevate it. This is achieved by utilizing the observation that not the whole cache line is requested by a given core. And to showcase that, this figure shows how much data within a cache line is actually used by the requester cores for, the, for these evaluated applications. And we observed that many applications only need a quarter of the cache line most of the time. Based on this observation, we designed chunking optimization under which the, the data reply from the home to the requester core only carries the data required by the requester and not the entire cache line. We now evaluate the optimized shared L1 caches, which we call a shared plus plus. This figure shows the L1 miss rate under shared plus plus on the y axis across the evaluated replication sensitive applications and normalized to the private L1 baseline. We still observe significantly lower L1 miss rate because of eliminating data replication. And this leads to a bandwidth boost, which improves the overall performance by 26% on average across these evaluated applications. Also under the optimized communication, the latency overhead is only 9%. So we can see that shared L1 caches are beneficial for the replication sensitive application. But what about replication in sensitive applications? Some applications may have affinity towards the private L1 cache organization and may suffer under shared L1 cache organization. Therefore, we need a mechanism to identify these applications and execute them under private L1 caches. We achieved that using our proposed dynamic scheme, which alternates between assembling phase and an execution phase. Under the assembling phase, we collect counters to help in identifying the preferred cache organization at the end of the assembling phase. And once we reach the assembling phase end, we utilize the collected counters to evaluate the required metrics in order to choose between either shared or private L1 caches. Then we start executing under the selected cache organization till the end of the execution phase. Now I will dig more and show how our scheme concurrently evaluates both a shared and a private L1 organization using the local L1 cache, caches during the assembling phase. This is achieved by treating half of the L1 cache sets as shared and the other half as private. We assign the even sets to be treated as private and the odd sets to be treated as shared. We also interleave the set indexing between private and shared at a fine granularity to decrease the bias of request focusing on a subset of the cache sets. We use counters to gather information that is crucial for classifying the replication, the running application. And because of the concurrent evaluation, we use two groups of counters for each option. Only the corresponding counters are updated based on the least significant bit of the set bits. The assembling phase continues until both the shared and private groups each process a number of local L1 accesses. And once the assembling phase ends, 
the counters from each group are used to evaluate which cash organization to use. And this evaluation is based on the effective bandwidth metric, or EB for short. Therefore, we refer to our dynamic scheme as Dime EB. Our EB metric is defined as the bandwidth received from the L2s amplified by the L1 cache behavior in addition to the replies received from the home course. And overall, our dynamic scheme is bandwidth oriented, correlates with IPC, and it is local and lightweight. Now we move to evaluating our proposed schemes. These two figures show the performance of Dime EB on the Y axis in terms of IPC for both the replication sensitive and the private friendly applications. And the results are normalized to the private L1 baseline. We observe that dynamic EB achieves an average IBC improvement of 22% and up to 52% for the replication sensitive applications. And as for the private friendly applications, dynamic EB incurs 4% performance drop on average. Overall, across all evaluated applications as shown in this S curve, our dynamic scheme can provide performance benefits of shared L1 caches for the replication sensitive applications and can re recover the performance loss of the private friendly applications. And more results and case studies can be found in the paper. To conclude, we observed an opportunity to employ shared L1 caches in GPUs to eliminate data replication across the L1 caches and improve the overall performance. However, to get the benefits of shared L1 cache design, we developed optimizations to reduce the inter-core communication overhead also, we developed a dynamic scheme that classifies the application phases and either uses shared or private L1 cache design accordingly. Our dynamic scheme improves the overall performance by 22% on average for the replication sensitive application and incurs 4% performance loss for the private friendly applications. Thank you for attending and I'm happy to take questions.